Now for part eight and the final part of the FG training, um, the final part of the basic um, teach yourself or have a refresher course, whatever you want it to be. The main thing is that you pass the test afterwards. And then you become certified in being able to use EasyIO FG products. So well done in advance. So part eight, we're going to talk about histories and SQL-like database and history charts. Let me show you where the documents are first of all. So we go, as always, we go back to the EasyIO folder, go into user guides, and go to the FG series. And in here, you will see we have the SQL light here. And we've just recently added a new feature to this, which allows you to automatically email CSV files from the controller. Which is a really amazing feature to have in a, you know, in a, a small controller like this. It really makes a, a complete solution. So if you look at this document, it's going to tell you all the capacities, what it does. You can have multiple tables. You can have 32 columns per table. It's all here. It tells you how many objects. You can also do some basic analytics in here. You can look at history. You can data mine the database. And you can take actions based on that on, for things like peak demand this year, this week versus this week last year. You could look at average temperatures. You could look at cost. You could look at all kinds of things. Now, that particular feature is called the FUNC object, the F-U-N-C object, which is in this document, which is, if we go and notice, function blocks. So um, let's now show you how this works. So let's start now to add histories to the app. Now, I'm showing here the completed app that you can that you are going to prepare, so you can pass the test and become certified. Um, so all I'm going to do is add histories to this and the SQL database to this completed app. The graphics will look like this when you finish the uh, handling, and it will look like this. Then you've got a live chart, which is more like a trend a trend chart which will come up now. Okay, and that's going to keep updating. And then you're going to have a schedule page for setting your times that is going to look like this. Okay, so um, we'll all become familiar to you once you've finished the test. So let's add um, an SQL database as per this document. I showed you where it was just earlier in this video. So what we're going to do, first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a folder. And we're going to call that folder SQL. We have the SQL folder. What you do next is double click on it and add an SQL Lite service. So just go into here, SQL Lite service. This is all in the document. Don't change the name of this and please don't change the name of the database as they are fixed. So double click on there. Then we add a table. You can have as many tables as you like in theory, but um, in the document, it will give you some guides on capacities. So let's go to the SQL, let's add a table. You will get errors like this, that's quite normal. All you do is put a case sensitive name in at the bottom line. We're gonna call it Chiller. And at the top, we're just gonna call it Chilled Water SQL. Then what we're going to do is enable it and then inside it start building some columns. Now I'm going to cheat a little bit because I've already created two ramps that we need in the training examples. One is the chilled, chilled water flow temp and the other one is a chilled water return temp. Okay, so we have two values coming in there. Just tidy them up. Then we're going to add two tables. So the first, um, sorry, not tables, columns. So what we're going to do then is go down to the SQL and go to the SQL float. 
again just give it a name at the top we're going to call this chilled water um, flow um, call it FLT and inside we're going to call the actual name we're going to call chilled water flow T that case that is case sensitive so it is important and then we'll just link that into there and we'll create a second one so now i can go to my recently used just to save time and let's call this chilled water return temp and here we'll call this chilled water return t okay that's all normal now we link the ramp so we have some values changing now what we need to do now to create the database is just move your mouse across to the table name here and do a right click and do action update structure and sync structure and that has now created your database to prove it Let's open FileZilla, go and have a look at the SD card because that's where this file will live. Log in. The right hand side is the SD card, go into web. And there's the file we've just created, easyio.db. Now, what we're gonna do is show you an example funk object also. That's the one that does some basic analytics and is quite an interesting kit to use to start analyzing what's going on so it's just called sql funk and you can have as many of these as you like so i'm going to call it funk example i'm going to enable it true now this is important now we need the table name which we said was chiller and we need to put in the chilled water flow temperature so i just need to look that up let's get the name exactly right it's this one here copy go back to here and just put this into here okay now this will then basically mine the database once we create some values and you can arrange for it to do custom today last year last 24 hours all kinds of different things function output can be an average account a min max or a delta you can do it on an interval or a trigger a daily weekly yearly and when you decide all those things when it does um, activate based on what you've said you will get a value here so i've got a little trick to show you here of a way i've come up with a way of making this work so let me just recap inside here we've got two ramp objects simulating chilled water flow and chilled water return basically they're just sine waves so the values are going up and down within a certain range what i'm going to do by to cheat is i'm going to add a TikTok. with that TikTok, i'm going to make the database grow very quickly so currently we have two records you can see that there and the funk object's not doing really anything because we don't have much of a database we only have two values if i link the TikTok to the trigger watch what happens record three four five six okay so it keeps on going up if we also link that to the funk object and we tell the funk we're not going to do an interval we're going to do a trigger trigger only and I want the output to be the average temperature. It will keep changing on with based on this TikTok. So watch this. The output is going to be averaged based on hold on today. There you go. So based on today's information. We only have 27 records this value keeps changing i think that's pretty amazing to be honest i think it's um, very clever the other thing i could do is create another funk object and look at the delta 
or look at the maximum. So if I change this to say it's going to be the maximum, then it won't change because it's until it exceeds that value, it won't come in as the maximum. So now we need to look at how we're going to chart this information. So now let's chart this um, information. As you can see, we're creating a lot of records using this TikTok. And what we're going to do now is borrow a pre made example of what can be done. Now, if we go back to the EasyIO folder again, you'll see there's a thing called historyjames.gr here. I want you to copy that, go into CPT, go to Files, Recent, AHU, Graphics, paste it in there. Now, once we've done that, it will appear here. Okay, it just saves us some time. We're not going to use a lot of it. In fact, I'm going to delete part of it, I'll delete this bit here. And then what we're going to do is start to make some sense of this. Now, when you edit, when you edit graphics, existing ones, you move your mouse across to here where it says text. And you see there's a little kind of editing icon there. You press do a right click edit and it looks for the link that was there before. Just ignore that. And navigate that to the SQL and to the, the table here and we're going to select the table name okay that's all we need to do and then we're going to download the CSV and you'll see here there's a link these are standard um, SQL commands so just um, read these up in the dock. All I'm going to do is edit this one where it says an ocean demo. I'm going to call it chiller or lowercase. That's all I need to do. And on the HTML view, I just change this to also say chiller and then press OK. Now in the chart itself, what we're going to be looking at, in fact, I'm going to move that across a little bit down here. All we need to do is enter the data we want to read. And this is important that we don't make any mistakes. So we put in chiller for the um, name. I can't remember the column name. So what I'm going to do is just hit save, go back to my logic, go into the SQL, go into the table. And the first one is this one. Just copy the column name here and go and put that in the chart. So in the properties, just put it in here and we'll call this chilled water flow tea. I'll just keep it the same. Um, then for the second one, we'll do the same again. Just go and check the, the exact name, which is in here and um, just copy that. Go back to the graphic and just put that into the second where it says humidity we're going to write over the top of it and we'll call it the same name again just control v and we are done all i need to do now is deploy that i'm actually going to do a full deploy just to be safe make sure everything gets added in and cleaned up and when we're done you're going to see a history chart and you're going to see a way that we can see the CSV file and a way that we can view it in just a web page format. We only have two columns, but you could have the whole chiller plant in there up to 32 columns. And you can have more than one table. And on the graphics, you can have as many as you like because we only display one page at a time. So when that's done, we will review that graphic and we will be then at the end of part eight of this FG basic training. As I said earlier, you can email these reports and that is covered in the document. It's a new feature we just added recently and I'm sure you will like that. So in the usual way, we just go to the preview button up here that will take us to the graphic and you will see the we don't really want to call it history, James, but I'll just leave it as that for now. And you can see there's our data.
doesn't mean a lot at this stage because it's just going up and down based on that TikTok. But look what we can do. We can go back and look at yesterday, which will have nothing in it because we don't have that amount of data yet. But today I can bring up all those records. I could also download this as a CSV file. If we double click on that, you'll see we've got the two columns with all these values in. I believe now we've got a few hundred records. Or we can just look at it on a web page, a HTML view that will look like this. And there we go. So that's it for the basic training. Um, look, enjoy the course, um, practice a lot, and then get ready for the advanced. So thanks very much for your time.